Welcome to your Active Heart, Healthy Heart exercise program. We're going to begin with the warm up, which is essential for preparing the body and preparing the heart for exercise. So start with the feet slightly apart, soften the knees, pull up through the spine, take the shoulders forward, up, back, gently down. Imagine that you have a piece of string pulling you towards the ceiling. Now breathe in, and as you breathe out, pull your tummy tightly into your backbone, but you're breathing out at the same time. Now release by 50%, and keep this good posture all the way through your exercise program. And off we go. Starting in gear one, a gentle march, a swing of the arms, and take the shoulders forward, up, back, gently down, again. Consider your posture nice and tall. And we're going to start with a heel dig. We're only in gear one, so we're keeping the exercise quite gentle at this stage. Let's take it back to the march. And when you're marching, think of your posture again. Tummy tight, shoulders relaxed. And the toe tap now. Lengthening the foot and tapping the toe onto the floor in front of you. Well done and a march. We're now going to do a knee raise. Tighten the tummy muscles and up comes the knee. Just to about 45 degrees. If you feel a bit wobbly, then just tap the toe in front. Your choice. And back to the march. The leg is now going to the side, so gently does it. Each time you come back to centre before you extend the leg sideways. And it's a march. Now the leg is going back so a gentle bend of the knee, not too energetic at this stage, and keeping the heel high, tap behind you. It's the march. We're now going to loosen up the spine. So take the feet slightly apart, soften the knees by bending them gently and wiggle the toes. Nice and tall and slide down to the middle, other way. We're loosening up the spine. Take care not to go too far. Just what's comfortable for you. And back to the mark. The spine works in two directions, so let's take the feet slightly apart, wiggle the toes, hands across the chest, and look to the right, to the middle. You'll notice it's just my rib cage that's moving. The hips are pointing forward. There's no movement from the waist down. And of course, the toes are wiggling like mad. back to the mark. We're now going up to gear two, which is slightly more energetic movement. If you feel you're working too hard at any time, please follow Caroline, who's going to do the lower intensity marches. And the elbow slightly bent, 
all the way round. The tum is tight and the posture is good. And back the other way. And you'll notice that Caroline's doing a shoulder roll if this is uncomfortable for you. Well done. Back to the march. It's now the heel digs. And. So a little lower on the bend. And because we're gear two, we're going to add some arms. But you'll notice Caroline's doing the lower level and her arms are swaying gently. Back to the march, pull tall. Excellent. Now the toe taps and a bicep curl. Again, Caroline's doing the lower intensity option. And back to the march. Ready with the knee raise. Pull the tummy in tightly for balance. And up we come. The knee comes a little higher because we're in gear two. And we're moving the arms a little more energetically. Excellent. Back to the march. The leg is now going to the side. So nice and gently, toe tap. The knee is bending a little lower. And as we're in gear two, I'm taking the arms out to the side. Excellent work. Back to the march. A swing of the arms, nice and tall. The leg is now going backwards. Here we go. Heel high, toe tap. A little deeper on the bend. And of course, that bicep curl. Are you beginning to feel a little warmer? Excellent work. Back to the march. Back to the spine. So let's take the feet slightly apart. Wiggle the toes, pull up through the spine. Tummy tight. And down, back to the middle. Take care that you keep the body in the middle and you avoid bending forward. One more each side. And back to the march. Okay, we're now going to do the spinal rotations. Take the feet slightly apart, bend the knees slightly, wiggle those toes, hands across the chest to the right. Side, middle. And just going as far as is comfortable with those hips facing forward. Good work. Now we're bringing the intensity up a little more because we're in gear three. So check the posture, but the knees are marching well, the arms are swinging, and bend the elbows slightly. And imagine that you're combing your long golden locks. If you have any discomfort in your shoulder, then follow Caroline, who's doing the lower version, and back the other way. Well done. Keep that march going. Keep up the energy. And we're going into the heel dig. Here we go. And now you'll notice that I'm bending quite a good deal more than I did in gear one. And we're going to add some big arms. Caroline's doing a lower intensity so her arms are not so high and she's not bending quite so low. 
Choose who you'd like to follow, whatever's comfortable for you. And march. Now we've got the toe tap. Here we go. So the same principle, we're in gear three, so nice and low. And make yourself work a little bit harder by bringing in those big arms. And again, Caroline's intensity is considerably lower than this gear three. And march. It's the knee raise. Tummy nice and tight. Pull up through the spine. Up you come. The knee's coming up to about 90 degrees, which is up to about hip level. And we're making the heart work a little harder by using bigger arm movements. However, if you do feel wobbly, then don't forget, you can toe tap, but keep the arms going at a bigger rate. Well done, take a march, nice big move. The leg is now going to the side and toe tap. The weight's in the middle, the supporting leg is bending quite low. And of course, we're in gear three, so we put in those big arms. Caroline's arms are lower and she's not bending quite so low. Excellent work. March it out. Get that posture check. Now we're taking the leg to the back. And heel high and nice deep bend. Make the movement harder by taking the leg a little bit further back, but keep the heel away from the floor. Now the arms come into play. If you're finding that your RPE is getting above light, then please follow Caroline and take the intensity down a little bit. Well done. Back to the march. Good arm swing, nice and tall. Well, I hope you're feeling a little bit warmer. We're now going to prepare the muscles by giving them a stretch. So take the intensity down a little bit. Just walking through the feet and bring the arms around. Imagine you're hugging that big person who's quite small, so look at down at them. You should feel a gentle tension in the top of the back. Well done, release that stretch. Centralize, think of your posture. Now place the right arm onto the right shoulder, slide it down the back, and with the left hand, just support the arm. If this is painful or uncomfortable, then take the arm across the body and just support it and feel the stretch between the elbow and the shoulder and release that stretch. Now we have to do this on the other arm. So place the hand on the shoulder, slide down the back as far as is comfortable and with the other arm, just support the arm a gentle tension between the elbow and the shoulder. If that's uncomfortable, as I say, you can take it across the body. And release that stretch. Keep the march going. Consider your posture as you put your hands on the small of the back and gently draw the elbows together so you're stretching the chest muscles. Well done release that stretch. Now tapping behind, heel high. We're thinking of the lower body as we take the right leg back, gently ease the heel into the floor, take the weight forward onto the left leg, wiggle the toes a little. And a march. Toe tap behind. And we're now taking the left leg back. Gently ease the heel into the floor. Check that both toes are facing forward.
Well done, and back to the march. Keeping a good posture, we heel dig to the front. The feet go underneath the hips, the toes are facing forward. Bend the knees slightly as if you're sitting on a bar stool. Take the right leg forward, squeeze the tummy in, the hands are at the top of the thighs for support. Look at the ground before you and bend forward until you've got the tension between the knee and the hip of the straight leg. Slowly back up again, well done. And we're going to repeat that on the other leg now. It's heel dig. Now take the feet underneath the hips, toes facing forward, bend the knees, extend the left leg with a relaxed foot, pull the tummy in nice and tightly with the hands at the top of the thighs and bend forward with the eyes looking at the floor in front of you. And slowly back up, well done, march out. The next stretch is for the front of thigh, which involves standing on one leg. So Caroline is going to use the wall for support. And if you feel that you're a bit unstable, that's the best way to do it. Taking the weight onto the right leg, focus on something that's not moving. Bring up the foot, hold the shoelaces, or if it's more comfortable, the tracksuit bottom. The knees are in a straight line and feel the tension in the front of the thigh. Well done, march out. Now take the weight onto the left leg. Again, focus on something that's not moving. Bring up the foot, hold the shoelaces or the tracksuit bottom, whatever's most comfortable for you, and feel the tension in the front of the thigh. Back to the march. Well done. Good work. Well, that's our warm-up finish. But before we go into the conditioning phase, we need to bring the heart rate up slightly. So let's have a good old march. Bring up the knees, swing the arms, and stand nice and tall. Well done, everybody. Well done. We're now going to start level three, the conditioning component, and taking the leg to the side. A gentle bend of the knee. When you're ready, bring in, in the arms to about shoulder height. How's that, Caroline? Yep, that's feeling fine. I'm just bringing my hands to waist height, so just slightly lower, just because I don't want to go too hard too soon. Well done. If you feel that your shoulders ache at any time, then do bring the arms down a little lower. And we're back to that march. So our next exercise is your hamstring curl. So take the feet under the hips and we're taking the weight from side to side, lifting the heel up to your bottom or to a comfortable range of movement for you. And then bringing in the arms when you're ready. So raising them up to the front, up to shoulder height. If you start with this and then think, this is too hard, just lower them down like I'm going to do. Leslie will probably be able to work at a slightly higher level. Is that right, Les? Yeah, this feels quite light actually. So I'm going to bend the leg a little deeper and make the arm movements a little bigger. If 
if at any time I feel that I'm working hard, then I'll go back to the original move. So how are you feeling at home? Can you chat to us? How's your breathing feeling? Keep going. And we're back to our march, well done. Using the opportunity to get a good posture, pull up through the spine, tummy good and tight, we're now going into the knee lift. If you're a bit wobbly, then follow Caroline, who's going to tap the toe in front to keep her stability. The knee comes up to hip level, about 45 degrees, and the arms move in a nice big manner. How are you doing, Caroline? Yep, that's yep. fine. Feeling quite happy just tapping the floor. Good work, you're doing well. And back to the march. Our next exercise is your lateral raise. So we're going to keep our feet moving throughout. If you've been advised to use a weight, grab those now. I'm just going to use body weight and please be aware that the muscles will tire using body weight only. So here we go. Nice, slow, controlled lift up to shoulder height and lowering down. Check your posture. So tummy's in nice and tight, pulling up from the top of the head and just moving those arms gently up and down. If your shoulders start to ache and you're using the weights, you can always just finish off the set using body weight. Or just bend the arms slightly to reduce the length of the lever. And that will also make it feel a bit easier. In our minute, we should manage between 12 and 15 repetitions. Any more and you're moving too fast. How does that feel for you, Leslie? That's fine. It feels comfortable in the shoulders. And if it does get a bit achy, then I'll bend in my arms just to make the movement a little bit less intense. And we're back to our march. Right, marching nice and tall, and we're taking the leg to the back. So toe tap, keeping the heel high. Once you've got the legs sorted out, then bring in the arms. Bending the supporting leg nice and deeply, and taking the arms about shoulder height. Is that a good, comfortable position for you? Yes, it's fine. I'm feeling refreshed after that active recovery, but I'm aware that after a few repetitions, I do need to adjust my arm position. So they're just lowering down now. How are you doing, Leslie? This is okay, yeah. And take it back to the march. So our next exercise is our march. So we're bringing up the level of the knees, making the arms swing that much greater. Check your posture is good. Tummy's nice and tight, pulling up from the very top of the head. Now for me, although I start off enthusiastically, I need to just take the intensity down a bit because I'm working too hard. Leslie, how are you doing? Well, this feels light. 
So I'm going to swing the arms more vigorously and bring the knees a little bit higher in the march. And how are you doing at home? Are you still able to chat to us? That's really important. Keep going, nearly there. And now we're back to our march, well done. So bringing the pace down. We're now going on to that half star. So bend the knee, take the foot to the side. And to make it a true half star, bring in the arms. I'm bending my leg quite deeply and taking my arms to shoulder height. But how's Caroline doing? Yep, yeah, I'm fine. I'm feeling warm. I'm breathing easily. But I certainly don't want to be working any harder. This is the right level for me, definitely. Just that slight bit lower than you. How are you? Absolutely fine, but I wouldn't want to take it any harder. Think about your RPE and check your heart rate. And at the end of this exercise, if you've been advised by your cardiac rehab team, you will have a chance to record this. And take it to a march. If you've been asked by your cardiac rehab team to record this, do so now. Okay, so we're back with an active recovery. This time it's your bicep curl, so if you need to grab your weights, please do so. Palms are facing forward for this activity and the upper arm stays nice and still as you lift the hands very slowly up to shoulder height and return back down. So, full range of movement, feeling the bicep contract as you go up. How's that with the weights, Leslie? This is fine. I'm just taking care not to grip the bottles too hard. I'm holding them in a relaxed manner and making sure I'm breathing. So check that posture while you're doing your weights exercises. Keep those tummy muscles nicely engaged. Pulling up tall. Well done. And that's your last one. We're back to our march. Keep those feet moving. We're back to the hamstring curl now. Taking the feet slightly apart, bring the heel to the bottom. A deep bend with the supporting leg. Posture good, and when you're comfy, bring the arms out to the front, about shoulder height. You can make this movement as big or as small as you feel comfortable, depending on how you're feeling. How are you feeling, Caroline? Yeah, I'm feeling good, refreshed after the active recovery. My arms, though, as you'll notice, coming probably waist height to the front. Any lower and I'd be working too light, I feel. And it's back to the march. And we're on to our next exercise, which is the knee raise. So quick posture check before you start, and that will help with your balance. So we're lifting the knee up. Now for me, that's 45 degrees. Leslie, you'll notice, is lifting her knees slightly higher. And her arm movements are that much bigger. It's really important that you work to the rate of perceived exertion that's right for you. So this is fine for me. How are you doing, Leslie? 
Yeah, this is good. This feels somewhat hard. I don't think I'd like to take it any higher though. If any time you do feel you're working too hard at 45 degrees, just tap the floor. I'm just gonna take a bit of a breather. You okay, Leslie? Yeah, I'm fine at the moment, thanks. Good. Well done, and you're back to your march. Okay, posture check, tummy pulled in. The leg is returning to the back again. Here we go. Heel high, toe tap, taking the leg as far as is comfortable for you. And when you're ready, join in with the arms. I'm taking my foot quite far back. I'm taking my arms quite high. What about you, Caroline? <laughs> I'm breathing well. I'm still chatting, so I don't want to take it up any higher at this stage. I'm trying to be very aware of what's appropriate for me. So yeah, I'm fine with not tapping quite so far back. Arms not quite so high, but still working well. Brilliant. back to the march. So we're ready for an active recovery. I'm gonna grab our weights. This time it's the upright row. So palms are facing in this time and you're slowly lifting your weight up towards your chin. The elbows actually lead the way. So the weight should just skim the front of the body and pulling up to a comfortable range of movement for you, somewhere between chin and chest. So again, 12 to 15 repetitions within your minute, but please do keep the feet moving. How's that one for you, Leslie? I like this exercise. You feel that your shoulders are working and your upper back. Really good for the posture. Well done. We're back to our march. We're now on a CV exercise, which is that good, strong march. Check your posture's good, pull up through the spine and really lift those knees. Swing the arms. Keep a good tall posture, relax those shoulders. I'm marching really strongly, what are you up to? <laughs> I'm working strong enough for me, that's for sure. Every time I bring my knees up as high as Leslie, it's just that little bit too much for me, so I'm working at a slightly lower level, but still for me, working somewhat hard. How are you doing, Leslie? It's good, thanks. Brilliant work. Now take it down to a gentle march. Our next exercise is our half star. You should know this by now. Here we go. We're tapping out to the side and back in. And with those arms, bringing them up nice and high, working to a comfortable range for you. For me, that feels comfortable with arms waist height. Leslie slightly higher. I'm not tapping out quite as far as Leslie to the side either. I'm just aware that if I try and match Leslie, it's just too hard for me. 
How are you feeling on this one, Leslie? Well, Caroline, I got a bit enthusiastic and took my arms <laughs> too high and be, it became hard. So I put my arms back down again. You're still chatting well, so that's good. How are you doing at home? Can you still chat? Well done. And we're back to our march. Right, back to the march. And it's a CV exercise again. Take the feet slightly apart and just bring the heel up your bottom. A nice gentle bend of the supporting leg, keeping the weight in the middle, tummy good and tight. And when you're ready, bring in the arms. My arms are coming just about shoulder height. I've got a nice deep bend with the leg. What about you, Caroline? Yep, I'm fine. I'm bringing up my heel well, but perhaps not bouncing through my knee quite as much. While you're doing this, think of your RPE and check your heart rate. And at the end of the exercise, you'll be given the opportunity to record this if your cardiac rehabilitation team have asked you to do so. Well done, now take this to the march. Now's the time, if your cardiac rehab team have asked you to record the level of RPE or your pulse rate that you were working at. Well done. Our next exercise is in active recovery, which is the wall press up, which Leslie will talk you through as I demonstrate. Go towards a good sturdy wall. Place your hands about shoulder height with the fingers pointing towards the ceiling. Take a small step back from the wall and take the weight onto the arms. Slowly lower the nose towards the wall and push back again. You'll need to do around about 12 to 15 repetitions of this exercise. Any more than this and you're probably working too fast. You'll notice that while Caroline's heels are on the floor, as she moves forward, her heels gently raise. That's perfectly okay. How's that feeling, Caroline? Yeah, that feels fine. I can really feel my chest and arms working. And back to the march. Right, that was an active recovery. We're now going back to a cardiovascular exercise. We're going to raise the knee. If you're again, if you're feeling less than stable, follow Caroline, who'll be toe tapping. Up comes the knee. I'm bringing up the knee to hip height, about 90 degrees, and taking the intensity up by raising my arms. Does that feel okay for you, Caroline? That's fine. In actual fact, I'm going to bring my knee up slightly higher because I'm feeling comfortable to do so. Obviously, if I start to feel that I need to go back to my toe tap, I will do. A little trick, if you put your tummy in nice and tightly, that helps you to keep your balance. And it's back to that march. Our next exercise is the backward lunge. So we're tapping behind with the ball of the foot, keeping the heel nice and high. And as and when you're ready, bring in those arms. So working to a comfortable range of movement for you and appropriate arm height to get the right level of intensity for your workout. 
for me, that's just about waist height is pretty much perfect. How about you, Leslie? Yes, it, it feels that it uh, became hard, so I brought my leg in a little bit and brought the arms down a, a smidge to take the intensity out of it. Now it's feeling good, feeling somewhat hard. Keep going, you're doing well. And we're back to our march. Well done, we're now on to the next CV exercise, which is that big dynamic march. So bring up the knees, swing the arms, keep nice and tall. I'm really enjoying this. Arms are coming high, knees are coming high, what about you, Caroline? How's it going? It's fine, Leslie, thank you. Having a good posture really helps with this one as well, so keep those tummies nice and tight. But yeah, I can't lift my knees quite as high as you, but I'm doing okay, I think. Thank you. And let's take it back to that gentle march. So our next exercise is an active recovery. So please keep your feet moving while we do this. There's no need for weights this time. We're doing a chest press. We're gonna take our arms up to make right angles at the elbows. Clench your fists or open hand, whatever you prefer, whatever's comfy for you. And then we're just gonna squeeze the elbows together. So the forearms meet and then slowly feeling that resistance as you go back. So you're squeezing and then controlling that movement back to shoulder level. So squeeze. So how does that feel for you, Leslie? Yeah, that's good. I can feel my chest muscles working here. How does that feel for you at home? Can you still chat to us? Good work, keep going. Well done, this is your last exercise. And relax the arms down, keep those feet going. But well done, that's the end of the conditioning component for this level, excellent work. Well done. You finish your conditioning component now, we're entering the cool down. The cool down is necessary to bring the heart rate and the body back to the pre-exercise level. If you feel you're getting tired or feeling you're working too hard or hard, then follow Caroline, who will be doing the lower level of intensity. Right, here we go. Heel digs with big arms. Caroline, how are you feeling on this? Yep, I'm fine, but as I'm trying to bring my heart rate down now, I'm doing a bicep curl. And back to the march. Now we're going into a toe tap. And again, bending the supporting leg and the heart rate's up. So big arms. Caroline, where about are your arms while I'm doing this? I'm doing my bicep curl, so the hand just quite naturally swings up to the shoulder. And I'm not bending quite as deep as you, I should think. So, feels very comfortable for me. And we're going back to the march. It's now the knee raise. If you're a bit wobbly, then follow Caroline, who's doing a toe touch. Brace your tummy muscles and raise the knee. 
Remember, we're in gear three, so keep that energy up. And back to the march. At this level, I'm still marching vigorously. Caroline, are you at this vigorous level? Not quite as vigorous as you. <laughs> now the legs going to the side, a deep bend, and the arms are coming up to shoulder height. And back to the march. Now the legs going backwards, keeping the heel high, tapping the floor with the toe behind you, and the arms are high. If you're finding this difficult, you may want to follow Caroline, who's doing a lower level of intensity. And it's back to the march. We're now going down to gear two, so take the oomph out of the march. The movements aren't so intense, so starting with the heel dig, not such a big bend of the knee, and a bicep curl, taking out the intensity of the movement. And a march. It's now the toe tap, and a bicep curl. And you'll notice that Caroline is just doing the leg movements. And a march. We're now going to do the knee raise. However, please, if you feel unstable, follow Caroline, who's doing the toe tap. Here we go. The knee is not quite as high, and the movement with the arms isn't so aggressive. And back to the march. The legs now going to the side, so a little bend. And the arms are lower. Back to the march. The leg is now going to the back, so a small bend of the knee, toe behind, and I have a bicep Curl. Caroline, where about are your arms for this one? This whole section, I'm not doing my arms. I'm just concentrating on keeping my legs going. Brilliant. Back to the march. Now we're in gear one, so a gentle heel dig. Good posture, shoulders down and relax. And back to the march. It's now the toe tap. Again, you'll notice that the arms aren't moving at all. All the work is done by gentle movements of the legs. And march. We're now doing a knee raise, but 45 degrees rather than 90 degrees. Tummy pulled in tightly. Hands relaxed. And it's a march. Right, the leg is now going to the side. A little bend of the supporting leg. Gently does it. And it's back to the march. And now we're going to take the leg back, a toe tap, the heel away from the floor. It's a gentle bend of the leg, toe tap, short distance behind, and the arms aren't moving. And a march on the spot. So just walking through the feet, we're now going into our stretches. So take the intensity down a little bit. 
and bring the arms around. Imagine you're hugging that big person who's quite small, so look at down at them. Feel that gentle tension in the top of the back. Okay, release that. Pull up through the spine. Now take the feet slightly apart. Because our heart rate has come down now, we can stop the legs moving. Place the right hand on the right shoulder. Slide it down the back with the left hand to support the arm. If you feel this is uncomfy, then take the arm across the body. And you should feel a gentle tension in the underarm. And release. So place the left hand on the shoulder. Slide it down the back as far as is comfortable for you. And with the right hand just to support it. You should feel a gentle tension on the underarm. But again, if your shoulder is uncomfortable or your neck uncomfortable, take it across the chest. And release that stretch. We're now going to stretch the chest muscles. A really important stretch to give you good posture and to make you look younger. Hands on the small of the back. Pull the elbows together. Caroline is doing a slightly different one. If you feel that this is too tight across your chest, with her hands on her temple and pulling the elbows back. and gently release that stretch. We're now going to think about the lower body. Feet as if they're on train tracks. Take the right leg back and gently ease the heel into the floor. When you're in that position, take the weight forward onto the left leg and you should feel a gentle tension in the calf muscle and just a gentle tension. That's a lovely stretch after all that hard work you've done. Right, place the feet together again. Okay, now we're going to do the other leg. Take the left leg backwards, ease the heel into the floor to so take weight forward onto the right leg and feel a gentle tension in the calf muscle. Just check that back foot's forward. And slowly back up. With the feet hip distance apart, bend the knees and take the right leg forward. Pull the tummy in tightly to support the back with the hands on the top of the thighs. Just bow forward with the eyes looking down at the floor, not at me. And you should feel the tension between the knee and the hip of the straight leg. Slowly back up again. And now we need to do that on the other leg. So feet hip distance apart. Bend the knees. Now take the left leg forward. Squeeze your tummy in before you bow with the eyes looking down at the floor. Bend forward. Feel that tension between the knee and the hip and slowly back up again. The last stretch is for the front of thigh. And again, if you feel that you need some help with your balance, then Caroline will show you how to hold onto a chair to make you more stable. The weight goes on to the right leg. The left leg comes up. Hold the top of the foot or the tracksuit bottom if that's more comfortable and feel the stretch in the front of the thigh. Gently release that stretch. And now we do the other leg. So again, get stable, take the weight onto the left leg, bring the right leg up, hold the tracksuit bottom or the shoelaces and feel that stretch in the front of the thigh and gently release. Well done, everybody. Good work. Excellent well work, Leslie.